The majority of Yandere Simulator's gameplay happens in a single location, the school. But there is one elimination method that takes place in a completely different environment. It's a stealth mission that involves sneaking into a house, avoiding the inhabitants, and retrieving something that has been stolen. It's a drastic departure from the rest of the game. So you might be wondering why it exists, and what made me decide to include it. And you also might be wondering if the final game will have any other stealth missions that take place outside the school. So that's what I'd like to talk about today. In this video, I'll explain why I put an outside of school stealth mission into the game. And I'll also describe the ways that the mission has recently changed and improved thanks to feedback from players. One of the elimination methods in Yandere Simulator is called the Befriend Betray method. This method involves doing a massive, life-changing favor for your rival. This favor will make the rival trust you enough to enter your house, where she will be completely vulnerable. There, you can choose to either befriend her or betray her. I first revealed this feature back in 2016. At that point in time, whenever I wanted to show off a new elimination method, I demonstrated the feature on a character named Kokuna Haruka. In order for me to demonstrate how the Befriend Betray method worked using Kokuna, she needed some kind of dire problem for the player to solve. So, I came up with a dilemma for her. I decided that her father was being extorted by a loan shark, and that the only way to save him was to kidnap the loan shark's daughter and hold her hostage. Many people liked the concept, but in terms of gameplay, it was mostly just a bunch of conversations and cutscenes with very little interactivity. So, I tried to come up with ways to add more meaningful gameplay to the Befriend Betray method. I thought about other games that featured loan sharks, and eventually I remembered the Yakuza series. There are plenty of missions in the Yakuza games about stopping loan sharks, usually with extreme violence. So, how would Yandere-chan deal with a loan shark if she was the protagonist of a Yakuza game? Well, she would go straight to his office, knock out all of his henchmen, and beat him within an inch of his life until he agreed to stop extorting Kokona's father. That would definitely make the Befriend Betray method a lot more interactive. After imagining this, I was so excited about the idea that I made a video about it right away. But that proved to be a mistake. The concept received a very negative reaction. Most people felt like a side mission with beat-em-up gameplay would be completely out of place in a stealth game like Yandere Simulator. They also felt like the idea of a schoolgirl beating up a group of grown men was just too over the top. So I apologized and abandoned the concept. But one person in the comments section gave me something to think about. If Yandere Simulator is supposed to be a stealth game, then perhaps the Befriend Betray method should involve short stealth missions about sneaking around someplace where the player could solve a problem for their rival. This comment planted a seed in my mind that would eventually grow into something special. When I first started working on Yandere Simulator, I was planning on keeping the entire game inside the school. Adding stealth missions that take place outside of school would be a very ambitious addition, because it would require new models, animations, voice acting, music, etc. I was very hesitant about committing to such an idea, but I didn't want to dismiss the concept without giving it a chance either. So I decided to try out the idea by creating just one simple stealth mission as a test. By taking the time to create one outside of school stealth mission, I would learn everything I needed to know in order to judge whether or not it would be feasible to try adding more stealth missions to the game. Each rival is supposed to be more challenging than the previous rival, so I decided that the first stealth mission would be short, simple, and easy. Almost like a tutorial mission 
teaching you the basic mechanics you'll be using in any subsequent stealth missions that might be created. With that in mind, I decided that the stakes should be as low as possible. Instead of infiltrating a military facility and sneaking past armed guards, I decided that Yandere chan would be breaking into a house and slipping past a family that wouldn't even consider violence as an option. To give the player incentive to play the mission, I decided that there should be a morally justified reason for sneaking into the house. And there's nothing more justifiable than rescuing a cute animal in danger, so a stolen kitten became the focal point of the mission. The story goes like this. A creepy otaku has become obsessed with Osana because she resembles his favorite anime character. To gain leverage over her, he has kidnapped Osana's pet cat and is threatening to harm it if Osana doesn't obey his every command. To help Osana, you must sneak into the otaku's house and rescue the cat. It's a little bit cheesy, but I wanted the first mission to have a very simple and straightforward story. Subsequent missions would, of course, have deeper gameplay and deeper stories. And that brings us to the subject of whether or not there will be any other outside-of-school stealth missions. To be honest, working on this mission was incredibly fun, and I'd love to create more. Originally, I estimated that implementing this type of feature would take weeks of programming, but in the end, I was able to handle it in just a few days. But there was something else that took much longer, the creation of all the assets that the mission required. Concept art for the modelers, the exterior of the house, the decorations around the house, the neighborhood around the house, the decorations inside of the house, the animations and voice acting for the family, a grand total of 33 illustrations of magical girl pretty Miyuki to decorate the stalker's bedroom. My portion of the work only took a few days, but the rest of the assets combined took months to produce. The reason why it took so long was because the assets were being provided by volunteers, generously creating things in their spare time on the weekends. I can't possibly overstate how grateful I am to them for their time and assistance. But if I had enough money to pay them to create assets full time, then everything would probably have been completed in just a couple of weeks, instead of a few months. So in the end, whether or not the final game will have more stealth missions is largely dependent on whether I can raise enough of a budget to pay professionals to create assets for me full time. One way to raise that kind of budget is to hold a crowdfunding campaign, so I'm planning to do that in the near future. I'm still not ready to announce when it'll happen, but I hope that it'll receive a lot of attention, because it could be the difference between whether we get more stealth missions or whether Osana's mission is the only one. With that said, the mission, when it was first released, wasn't perfect. Many people did enjoy it, but a lot of other people provided some feedback for how it could improve. The next thing I'll talk about is how the stealth mission improved thanks to feedback from the players. The first thing is something I honestly should have seen coming a mile away. The objective of a stealth game is to get from point A to point B without getting caught. The fun of a stealth game comes from having multiple options for how to reach your destination, creating a plan in your mind, and executing that plan while dealing with any obstacles that pop up along the way. The original version of the Stalker House stealth mission did not satisfy that criteria. There was only one path to the Stalker's room, which means that the player was forced into a linear experience and was not rewarded for exploration. To solve this problem, I added a second way to enter the building. It is now possible to shut off the circuit breaker, forcing the family's father to exit the house, which provides the player with an opportunity to slip in through the front door. 
It's a minor addition, but in terms of game design, it means that the experience is no longer linear, and that the player is rewarded for looking around and trying new things. Another fun aspect of stealth games is the ability to use various tools to distract or incapacitate your enemies. That sort of thing is missing from the Stalker House stealth mission. But that was a deliberate game design choice. I wanted the first mission to be as simple, straightforward, and bare bones as possible. But if more stealth missions are added to the game, various tools would gradually become available to the player over time, such as the smoke bombs and stink bombs that are already fully functional in the Alphabet Killer Challenge. In the original release of the demo, if the otaku noticed the player attempting to rescue the stolen cat, he would yell about it, but he would not make any attempt to physically stop Yandere-chan. A lot of people thought that this was... weird. But actually, there was some logic behind it. First of all, the stalker is fully aware that he has no legal ground to stand on. He's a thief, and he's been terrorizing Osana with threatening messages. He doesn't want to do anything that could result in the cops showing up at his house because he knows how much trouble he would be in if the police learned what he's been doing. So, apprehending Yandere-chan or attacking her is simply not an option for him. Furthermore, he doesn't want to make too much noise and draw his parents into his room, since he would be horribly embarrassed if his family saw his pitiful living conditions or his shrine to an anime girl. More importantly, he doesn't want his mom and dad to be aware that their son is a criminal. And last, he is meant to be seen as a spineless coward who would be too afraid to actually attack anyone. An impotent little man who is incapable of doing anything more severe than making anonymous threats over the phone. A person who wouldn't raise a finger against anything more threatening than a kitten. Because of all these factors combined, he can neither attack Yandere-chan nor call for help. He really is in a position where he has no other option than to simply shake his fists with empty rage and merely watch as Yandere-chan walks away with the cat. However, in absolutely any video game, there should always be some type of consequence if the player screws up. Allowing the player to alert an enemy with no punishment whatsoever is... pretty weird. It goes against everything that players have been trained to expect from video games. So, a lot of people expressed that the stalker should definitely take action against the player. Even though the stalker has a million reasons to avoid laying a hand on Yandere-chan, at the end of the day, I have to do what's best for the game. So, I've rewritten the Stalker's personality to make him impulsive and violent enough to attack Yandere-chan, even if doing so defies all logic. Fortunately, this type of thing won't be a problem moving forward. I don't want to drop any spoilers, but if further stealth missions are added to the game, they would definitely involve characters who have very plausible reasons to attack Yandere-chan. There was another thing that bothered people about the mission. After leaving the stalker's room, his mother and father simply disappeared. The reason for this is because I was deliberately trying to make the first mission relatively easy, but the unexplained disappearance of two family members was just plain weird. So, I decided to provide an explanation for the vanishing mother and father. When you exit the stalker's room, you will discover that the kitchen door is now closed, and you will hear the sound of a man and woman arguing on the other side. That's right, the stalker's parents are having a domestic dispute. That's the reason why they aren't able to hear the sound of a struggle coming from their son's bedroom, and why they aren't around to catch you as you flee the house. If you listen closely, you can just barely make out what they're saying, but it's not too important to the story. And with that, I've said just about everything I wanted to say about the stealth mission. It was an incredibly valuable learning experience, 
and it taught me everything I wanted to know in terms of how many resources and assets would be required in order to keep adding similar missions to the game. And the feedback that I received from players gave me a firm idea of what principles to keep in mind when designing future missions. It's still too early to say whether or not there will be any more stealth missions added to the game in the future, but I hope you'll look forward to the final game either way. Now that I'm done talking about the current state of the demo, I'd like to turn my attention towards the future. The next subject I'd like to talk about is how the rest of the game will be different from Osana's week. I'll release a video about it tomorrow. Thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator.